Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton, your host, and this is Limitless Life, where we take all the limits off our life. Man, once, once you learn about Jesus Christ, the real Jesus, not the religious Jesus, but when you learn about Jesus, you get to take the limits off your life, man. I was limited with sickness and disease and I got healed. It took the limits off. I was uh, in debt up to my ears and I, I found out Jesus teaches how to get debt free and I paid off our mortgage and paid off our million dollar ministry property and we paid off everything and we're debt free. Glory to God, took the limits off. I'll tell you, living life with Jesus takes the limits off your life. So welcome to Limitless Life. We've actually been uh, talking about how to let Jesus live through us. Um, uh, he really wants to live through us because he died for us. And so when we accept him, he puts himself in us by his spirit. And then he wants to live through us. So we've been talking about how to let him live through us. In fact, our foundation text... In fact, before we go back to our foundation text, that's in case you want to turn to it, it's Galatians 2.20. But I was meditating on a verse before I came on the air about, uh, I've quoted, actually I've quoted many times on different programs, but it's over in Acts, the uh, uh, 17th chapter, about the 28th verse, I think it is, um, where Paul makes the statement, in him we live. Paul Paul was actually in Athens, Greece, uh, when he made that statement. Um, and he was preaching to these uh, folks. The, the, they were religious folks. But when he was preaching to them, he said, you guys are preaching, um, believing in an unknown God. In other words, they had a religion and it was, it was, they were believing in a God, but you can't know him. You can't know anything about him. He's just unknown, so you just believe in him. Well, what are you supposed to believe about unknown God? <laughs> anyway, Paul's preaching to these men in Athens, Greece, and, and he starts telling them about Jesus and how you can know him. And, and then in, in verse 28, he says, For in him we live, and in him we move, and in him we have our being. So when I thought about Jesus living through us, which is what we've titled these, this series this week, uh, I thought about, man, in him I live. In Him I move. In Him I have my being. So I want to live in or through. It's a preposition in the Greek language. Through Him or letting Him live through me is really the way to live in Him. I want to move. In other words, I want to go about my daily activities, my weekly activities, my monthly activities, my, my life's goals and um, uh, visions and dreams and priorities. I want to go about all that with Jesus, doing it Jesus' way, doing it the way he'd want me to do it. In him I live and move and then have my very being is I want my whole life in every area, my whole being, spirit, soul, body, financially, everything, have my being. I want it to be his. That's in him we live. See, this is the only way you're going to live God's kind of life is in him. And because if you're born again, you are in him, then you can. You can live in him, but you also uh, have a choice about the matter. And we've talked about that before. So let's go back to our foundation text, Galatians 2.20. Uh, if you really want to live in Jesus and you really want him to live in you and live through you, then you got to count yourself as dead. You've been crucified with Christ. Look at what Galatians 2.20 says. You've got to die to self. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen to the message. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have uh, your good opinion. And I'm no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's our foundation text we're talking about where we are going to live our lives 
as though we're dead and Jesus is alive. Just, okay, Jesus, I'm going to just let you take over my body and I'll just, uh, in you I'll live and move and have my being. I was talking about. And then we talked about Colossians 3, 3, where you are dead, your life is, you've been crucified with Christ. Uh, you're dead, I'm sorry, you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. You are dead. I am dead. So, play possum. <laughs> Again, that's the inside joke for those of you that started with me the first part of the week. But uh, play possum. You've got to learn to play possum. Praise God. And, and you're, not, you're not faking anything. It's all through faith. Everything you do is faith in what Jesus has already done for you. That's what releases His grace. So faith in grace, that means you don't earn it. You don't deserve it. You're, you're receiving the favor of God. You're receiving the blessing of God apart from your Good works. No, bless God. It's all because of Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so that's the way I'm going to live my life. Um, but I'm dead. So play possum. <laughs> but we were actually over in Luke 9, 23, last program, uh, where Jesus makes this statement. If any man have come after me. So if you want to come after Jesus, you want to follow after Jesus, you want to be a Jesus follower and let him live through you. Then he says, come after me. Uh, Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. So the four things. Somebody said, take up his cross daily. Yeah, that's what it says in Luke. If you read Matthew and Mark, it leaves out the word daily. But we are reading here in Luke, so we can include it. It's okay. Come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, follow me. So what we found out last program was when Jesus said this, he's speaking to Jews, <clears throat> and they all hear him prost proselyzing, proselyzing him. Uh, in other words, they hear his invitation to come after me as an, an invitation to be a proselyte of his. And what we found out about uh, the Jewish faith and the, and the steps of proselytism, of becoming a Jewish proselyte, um, is there were four things that was, that was meant. So when they heard him say, come after me, they thought four things. Number one, embrace his way of life voluntarily. Without anyone making you do it, you were not fooled, you were not coerced into doing it. You accept Jesus uh, based on uh, your decision. Number two, you forsake your old way of life. You recognize it as false, erroneous, untruthful, and you now separate, consecrate and separate yourself uh, uh, from your old ways. You, you, you depart from your old ways and friends, you recognize you're not the same person you were before. You're a new person. Number three, you now submit to everything Jesus said and everything Jesus does. And you even accept any, uh, uh, accept any consequences, any persecution or inconveniences that come along with following Jesus. And number four, you're going to go all the way with Jesus. You believe in him now while you're alive, you're going to follow him. You're going to go all the way to death until you die. You're going to believe in Jesus. So that's the four things that they understood Jesus meant by, by this one phrase, he that will come after me. See, we need to understand, friends, Christianity, true Christianity is not an escape theology. I've heard people say, oh, you Christians, you know, you're just trying to deny, deny reality and you're just trying to, you know, your, your little belief in Jesus is trying to just escape the world. No, no, no. I, I become a whole new creature. I become part of a whole new kingdom. I become a whole new person and with God's life in me and I become a whole part of a whole new government. Isaiah says the government is upon uh, Jesus' shoulders and there shall be, shall be no end of that government. Every other earthly government is going to fade away. No, it's not escape theology, friends. It's a new theology, praise God. Uh, it's a belief in God that true... Christianity is a theology, all right, but here it is. It's a belief in God that he wants you and me to live his life, both on earth and in heaven, the same as Jesus. So we're followers of Jesus. So that's what Jesus meant when he said in this verse, uh, if any man will come after me. That's what they understood. See, you and I just read it and we just think, oh, that means just, okay, let, let's, go, let's go follow Jesus. No, come after me had a whole lot more to do with it than that. So <clears throat> it's a true, true commitment, life, life's commitment, eternal commitment. So come after me 
And then the next thing in this verse that it says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So let's talk about deny self. What did Jesus mean when he said deny himself? That means we are to abandon self-dependence and our own selfish desires. Self-dependence and self selfish desires. That's what it means here to deny yourself. Self, so let's talk about those things. Self-dependence. Who do you look to for guidance? Well, bless God, I look to myself. Well, 2 Corinthians 3, 5 says we're not sufficient as of to think anything of ourselves. <laughs> so why are you going to look to yourself if you're not sufficient? Well, I'm, I think I'm pretty smart. No, no your, your smarts are piddly squat compared to God's. Don't ask me to spell that. I, I picked that saying up when I was a kid in Odessa, Florida, growing up. Piddly squat. <laughs> that ain't piddly squat is the way we'd say it. No, that, that's nothing, in other words. That means not, your, your smarts is nothing compared to God. So why do you want to depend on you? You know, self-dependence will, will mess you up, man. You want to deny yourself. You don't want self-dependence. We are not, 2 Corinthians 3, 5, we are not sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Look what it goes on to say. But our sufficiency is of God. We have our dependence on Him, not on ourselves. In fact, Jeremiah, Jeremiah makes this statement in Jeremiah 10, 23. Oh, Lord. I know that the way of man is not in himself. Boy, that's a cool statement. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. So no man. Let me, I'll read some other translations here in a minute that will help you understand it more. But, but no man has the sufficiency in himself to know what to do and what way to go. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, oh, I don't know how to get in the car and go up to the store. That's not talking about. It's talking about my whole direction for life, what my life is all about, where I'm headed, where I'm going, where I'm going to go for eternity. No, uh, the, Jeremiah says, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his paths, direct his steps. Listen to the good news. Oh, Lord, I know that none of us are in charge of our own destiny. None of us have control over our own life. The Bible in basic English, Oh Lord, I am conscious that a man's way is not in himself. Man has no power of guiding his steps. The International Standard Version, Lord, I know that a person's life is not his to control, nor does a person establish his way in life. The Message Bible, I know God, no, I know God that mere, or I know God, that mere mortals can't run their own lives. That men and women don't have what it takes to take charge of life. Hmm. And then the New Living Translation, I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. That's important, friends, for us to understand God created us. And He's our source of real life. And if we want to live, we got to learn to die to self and realize, okay, I am going to live according to Him. I'm going to let Jesus live through me and I'm going to live in Jesus. And my footsteps are going to be ordered of the Lord. Praise God. Everything I do and say is going to be, be uh, point me down the path that God wants me on. Not, well, what, I think, what do I want to do in life? I think I'll be a doctor. I think I'll be this. I'll think, no, find out what God wants you to do in life. If you're a young person not yet gone to college, find out what God wants. Don't just pick a college because it's where your parents want you to go. Don't just pick a college because you think other people have done it. It looks fun. It looks this. No, man, find out what God wants you to do. And then you pick a school. You pick a college if that's what God wants you to do. Some people God didn't send to college. And he gave them the, the ability to make great amounts of wealth. They became multimillionaires or have been a billionaire and, and they never even went to college. So uh, you want to find out God's will for your life. The steps, this is what Proverbs says, Proverbs, uh, or no, Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. So you and I are to get our steps. We're to get our 
our marching orders, if you will, uh, from the Lord, and then we'll delight and so will God in that way. The English Revised Version says this, The Lord shows us how we should live, and He is pleased when He sees people living that way. Isn't that good? And then the Good News Bible says, The Lord guides us in the way we should go and protects those who please Him. So see, there's even divine protection. That's, that's what I'm trying to get across here about the world has its way. You can walk in the way of the world, but it's not in man to know that way. So when you think you have it all figured out, you're doing it apart from God. You have it all figured out. You're smart enough in yourself. I'll do this and I'll do this and I'll do this. And then all of a sudden you get in an accident the next day and you die. Ah, see, you weren't smart enough in your own way to even protect your own life. Somebody else came along and killed you. So this says when our steps are of the Lord and we're, we're, we're walking in the way that God protects us, uh, goes, then we're going to be protected because we're pleasing God. The New Living says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Remember, we're talking about denying ourselves. No more self-dependence. Look at uh, Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord is the one that directs his steps. See, in, 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 it's easy for us. Let me say it this way. When it says a man's heart devises his own way, it's easy for you and me to figure out what's best in any given situation. But the Lord doesn't want us figuring it out. This says he wants to direct us. He wants to be our director, our Lord, the one in control, the one showing us the way, the truth, and the life. And this says he wants to direct our steps. So how does he direct our steps? Let's look at Psalm 37 and verse 31. Psalm 37, verse 31. This uh, talks about the righteous and it says, The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. In other words, you're not going to fall. You're not going to just go from mess to mess and fall into one problem and fall into the other and just keep falling in life. Not going to keep doing that, no. Uh, the law of God is in your heart. Now, I knew when this was written, it was talking about the law of Moses, but in the New Covenant, the Word of God is called the perfect law, the perfect law of liberty. So the perfect law of liberty, when it's in our heart, we stay full of God's word. Then this says none of our steps, our financial steps, our marital steps, our physical steps, our mental and emotional steps so that our feelings don't fall and slide. No, none of our steps shall slide. Man, I like that. And so the law of God has to be our, our source, the law of God. Psalm 119, verse 142 says, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. See, the law, the perfect law of liberty, the Word of God is the truth. His righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So, the law of God is the Word of God. And when that's first and foremost in our lives, God says your feet won't even slide. What's He doing? He's protecting us from accidents and, and messes in our lives. Um, so God directs us with his word. And of course, Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. The spirit always leads us, but the spirit leads us according to the word. The spirit and the word always agree. David said this in Psalm 119. In fact, I'll have you turn over there. Verse one, uh, 133, Psalm 119, verse 133. Order my steps in your word. Order my steps in your word. So, see, he, he knows, listen, if my feet are not going to slide, i gotta, I got to walk according to the Word. So, Lord, order. My footsteps are ordered to the Lord, right? So, order my steps according to your Word. In fact, in this same psalm, look at, look at verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet. That means you have... You have light, a lamp to your feet. That means your feet, uh, wherever you're stepping, you can see where you're stepping if your feet are lit up, right? 
And his word is what's going to do that. So you can see where you're stepping. Well, that way you avoid the snares of the devil, the traps of the devil, the messes that life brings you. You don't have to step because your feet are uh, lit up according to the word. And then what does it say? Uh, a light to my path. So not only are my feet lit up, but now I can see down my path and it's lit up with the word. So the word sh showing me how to go. And so if there's something in my path that's wrong, the word will protect me from going that way. I'll go around that thing. I'll go above that thing. I'll go through that thing if I have to, because there are things we will go through in life. But God won't allow us to be tempted above what we're able He'll make a way of escape and bless God, we'll go through it with joy. I'll walk right through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil because God's with me, he comforts me, he's with me. <laughs> he sets a table up so I can sit down and say, please pass the bread right in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Another right here in this same Psalm, look at verse 130. Verse 130. He said, the entrance of your words Give light. Well, we just found out his word is a light to our uh, lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Look, he says the entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Oh, you know what that means? He makes it simple. It's not hard. It's not hard to understand God. He makes it simple. If, if, if you're hearing things preached or taught, whoever you're following and it's hard. Oh, man, it's so it's so deep. I can't follow it. It's so deep. I'm I'm drowning, <laughs> then, then somebody, whoever you're listening to is not making it simple. It should be simple. It should be easy. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Didn't he? He did say that. And then uh, the entrance of your words give life gives understanding. So we should be able to have understanding when we're following the ways of God. And then look at 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 22, 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all those who trust in him. Verse 32, for who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? Verse, 20, verse 33, 2 Samuel twenty-two thirty-three. 33. God is my strength and my power. And he makes, now watch this, he makes my way perfect. See, you don't, it's not within man to know his own way and to know his own steps. Man, you've got to humble yourself. If you're, going to, if you're going to live the kind of life we're talking about where you're letting Jesus live through you and you're living in him, you're going to have to die to self here. And, uh, and of course, you know, we're talking about uh, denying self or being self-dependent. Remember that? So we're going to have to uh, deny ourselves. Um, we should want God leading our lives and we should want to go the way that he wants us to go in every situation, not just in one area, but in my finances, in my marriage, in my health, in my thinking, in my feelings and emotions and all that stuff says. Uh, Isaiah 48, look at Isaiah 48. Man, we only have three minutes left. Isaiah 48, 17, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. Wow. Wow the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, he says, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way that you should go. And we're, we're, we're talking about denying ourselves here. So he's our redeemer. He's the Holy One. He, he's the Lord who teaches us to profit. So he wants us to profit financially as well as every other way. He wants us to profit. And he said, I will lead you the way you should go. So then we're not have to flounder in life and wonder, oh, no, God, what do I do? Where do I go? What do I do? Now we're talking about denying ourselves. So let's go back to Luke 9. We'll have to pick up here next program. But Jesus said we have to deny ourselves. That means we have to abandon self-dependence and then we can't look at ourselves for guidance. Remember, we have to deny ourselves. It means our own selfish desires. Um, what does selfish desires mean? Well, I'm going to have to pick that up next program because that's part of denying self. And if we really want to follow Jesus the way he wants us to and live his kind of life, then we're going to have to deny ourselves. We're going to have to abandon ourselves and we're going to have to um, 
not be dependent or self-dependence. Remember the two things about um, this that means self-dependence and it means selfish desires. So we looked at self-dependence. Next program, we'll look at selfish desires and, and talk about the things that go along with letting Jesus live through us. All right. So thank you again. Let me just pray for you real quick. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, for helping them to understand your truth. You said when we know truth, Lord, it would make us free. And you said it's easy and it's simple. So right now I'm praying that you would open all of our eyes, that we would see it and know it more clearly so that we could be free. You said when we know truth, so that means you want us to know it. Open our eyes so we know it, Lord. You said it'd make us free. So I thank you, Father. We are free. We are free spiritually from sin, physically from sickness, uh, financially from poverty and lack, uh, mentally and emotionally from depression and discouragement and anger and, and guilt and shame, and, and maritally from a hellish marriage. But thank you, Father. We can have heaven on earth, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. I pray that for you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll pick back up here next. I'm going to see if I can cl conclude this series, this uh, week-long series on, man, letting Jesus live through us so that we really live life to the fullest. All right, thank you for joining us, and thank you if you're a partner uh, for supporting the program. I know you monthly partners are helping us to travel the world and get the gospel out all over the world and get this broadcast out. And those that aren't watching, our partners are helping you see it. So if you're not a partner and you want to help others see it, that's, that's unselfish right there. That's living the way Jesus lived. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next program. Until then, I'm letting you know, live the way Jesus lives. God bless you. God intends for believers to be able to apply His Word to their daily lives and get good results, living the joyful, loving, and abundant life that Jesus has provided for us. Believers are supposed to understand the Bible and be able to enjoy the blessings of heaven while we are here on the earth. But many believers, at the beginning of their new life in Jesus, did not learn the most basic foundational truths of the Bible that will carry them over all of the traps and pitfalls and on into victorious, limitless life in Christ. In this new book, Dr. Hutton addresses all the issues that every Christian must come to know, understand, and establish as true in order to lead a limitless life in Jesus. To order your copy of Limitless Life with Jesus, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.